Welcome to the Very World Headquarters. My name is Jason McCann. I'm co-founder and CEO here of Very. Many of you know us as the creators of the original Vera Desk. Today, we have transformed thousands of offices all over the country, and we've worked with millions of fans all over the world that use our products. And each of you are navigating the future of work a little bit differently as you're thinking about hybrid, coming back to office, remote teams, 100% remote. Each of us is exploring the future differently. And it's some people are battling the coffee badging thing that's happening, but others are really trying to figure out how to build the companies and really the workspaces and cultures of their dreams. So I'm so excited to have you join Audra Parker, my chief people officer and I, as we have a great discussion and showcase some of the great things that we're working on here. So Audra, I'm so excited hey, to get to share the story with you, with all these people from all over that are joining us. Awesome, so, I'm so excited glad to you're be here. here. Yeah. yeah. So as you think about the people department in organizations, what is really the role of that organization for people? Yeah, um, so the people department, we're really lucky to get to be a part of people's career. Um, ultimately building a culture, but really focused on developing, retaining, and growing talent within the organization. So as you're talking to your peer group out there and all these organizations are, are navigating the future, really what's top of mind is what's going on with them? Yeah. Well, talent's top of mind and um, recruiting, retaining incredible talent. Um, but now more than ever, there's a ton of conversation about this in office, out of office, um, remote, hybrid, how do we engage our teams? How do we have them in the office and really grow them given the current challenges that are going on out there? And also I hear a lot about this multi-generational workforce that's happening. So you've got Gen Z, millennials, boomers, Generation X, all these things that are impacted. I don't even know what generation I am at this point, <laughs> but we've got lots of changes out there. And I think what I've read is Gen Z is six or seven percent of the workforce today, yep. but very quickly is going to be almost thirty percent of yeah. the workforce. So as you think about it's those changes, years, yeah. yeah. So what do you what do you see out there? Well, generational gaps have always been a challenge. You know, years ago we were talking about millennials. How do we integrate millennials into the the workforce? How do we make sure that they're engaged? And I think that hasn't changed. Um, it's always going to be a challenge. But with boomers leaving at a rate of, they say about 100,000 a day are exiting the workforce. So that's a tremendous amount. It's really about how do you integrate talent? How do you take the best of everyone within your organization, no matter what the generation is, and learn from them? How do we take what boomers do, which is really valuing being productive, focusing on the work, and embracing what millennials and Gen Z love, which is really all about adding value, making the world a better place, engaging in, in that sort of stuff. So like, it's really blending them. Yeah, and, I, and having raised three Gen Zs right now that are, that are out there, I mean, they grew up really as digital natives. So access to everything at their fingertips. So um, as we're navigating that, and then where my generation technology and those things were different and later on. So what are you seeing there with, with that generation of workforce in the future? Yeah, you know, Gen Z often was coming into the workforce at the time when people were going out of the workplace. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of that, that phrase, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And many of them have learned how to integrate into their career over Slack or over Teams. So they haven't had that unique opportunity to be in person. And it's a different skill set. How do you ask for development? How do you learn experientially? Um, and when you haven't done that in person, you just don't know. Um, so I think that's why you see a lot of executives talking about needing to figure out how do we fill that gap? How do we bring people together more often and make sure that people are being given those experiences? Yeah, I think mental health and wellness for that generation has been so challenging. I know it, the, when COVID hit and you had a lot of kids going through high school and college online. Yeah. So some there was a gap that happened out there. And so that's just been one of the things. Oh, yeah. That, and I think we are going to continue to see that. And that'll be something that. Um, probably some of it existed, but it's so much more talked about, like it's frequent conversation and we really need to be, you know, addressing it and concerned with it. So the the work has and the workforce and the workspace has changed over the last five years. And then we're kind of also glancing over the next five years. And so yep. what, what are you seeing out there? What are your what are your other people officers talking yeah. about out there? Oh, it's changed tremendously. I mean, you think about COVID, everyone went remote, right? So it became no longer in the workplace, um, people were working remote and unsure um, really how to handle that. And so since then, we've also seen people returning to the office, but needing to address how does um, 
How do we reintegrate them into the office? How do we make sure that the office is still relevant and a place that they want to be? Um, how do we make sure that people can learn whether they're in the office or out of the office? So we really focus on looking at both of those because most organizations have both of those challenges. Yeah, and I think, you know, before COVID, there was 100 million plus workers and, and jobs that were remote. There's a lot of jobs out there that we don't think of. So there's one group that may have been in an office all the time, but before COVID and even during it, everybody's navigating it a lot differently. I get CEOs all the time that ask me, how do we get back to the office? Should we come back to the office? What does hybrid mean? What are the impacts there? It's a lot of navigating it, but everybody's going through it. But a lot of things were already in place before and already in place after. And it, if you follow me on LinkedIn, which a few of you do, I, you know, we always talk about really connecting and being in person. There's something very magical that happens Absolutely. when teams are out there together. So very university is a big thing for us, ongoing yeah. leadership training development, and that's a big area that rolls under you. So how do you think about that yeah. and what we've been able to do here and other organizations? Yeah, so we're really proud of very university, which is our learning and development team. Um, that's just our kind of unique cultural name that we put with it. Um, we've done a lot of programs and we've learned a tremendous amount about how to engage remote and how to engage in person. Um, one of the fantastic things that we're very proud of is our book club. And book club is a quarterly experience that we do. Yeah, I um, absolutely love the book clubs because it's got, we've been able to integrate whether you're remote or in person and these great authors, you know, we've even had the Sturettes, Juliet and Kelly come in and, and talk to us in person. I remember the one we did with uh, Ryan Holiday and The Obstacle is the Way and all the work that Patrick Lencioni have done has been absolutely incredible and really meaningful topics and talking about relationship building and stress factors and all those things that we navigate. Yeah, it really started during COVID, but it has been a fantastic way to even give people personal development. We've had employees be able to participate mm -hmm. and be leading these sessions. Um, and so we're really proud of how we've been able to do that um, virtually. We're also really proud of how we have learned during um, COVID and still been able to create wonderful experiences that happen live. So right now you can see inside of our training room, the very U classroom, and we really kind of like to view it as a classroom of the future. It has opportunities that really engage adult learning, which isn't that much different than, than younger or student learning, but adult learning of casual seating, classroom seating, um, a mix of high tops. It's really all about the learner in mind. Um, and clearly when you're thinking of the learner, it's all about being in person. Um, and so we at Very try to focus on having our onboarding process be in, in person. This is something that we really missed during COVID. Um, so we do our onboarding all in person. It's a unique opportunity to bring people together. Mm -hmm. They get to be emerged in our culture almost immediately. They get an opportunity to meet their peers, create connections that they can take back even if they're not in an office. They have those remote connections, um, and they get a chance to meet our leadership team right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So so we've really worked hard to, to learn, to change, pivot, um, and have a good blend of in-person and remote or virtual, whether our employees are remote or yeah, virtual. It, when, when it's fun to have those onboarding classes, and I get to have coffee with the new hires, and yep. they can ask me everything. Also, it's such a diverse group that comes in, different skill sets, different journeys in their careers that all get to come yeah. in and, and be in person, which is fabulous. And so there's also been this talk about the war for talent that's been oh, impacting yeah. all businesses out there. And so how do you how do you think about that? Yeah. You know, when we came back from from COVID and everyone sort of started returning um, to office really from 2020 until early 2023, um, finding talent was extremely difficult, especially the best and the brightest. People were taking that opportunity to really make life-changing decisions, um, and we had what was known as the Great Resignation. And so we saw a tremendous amount of change and really that, that war for talent um, and making sure that we could find people. So that's what we really focused on was recruiting and hiring to culture, making sure we really got to know our teams. Um, then starting around 2023 is when we sort of saw a bunch of layoffs happening and change and uncertainty. So now when I talk to my peers, what everyone's really focused on is how do we retain this mm -hmm. incredible talent? If you had some organizational shifts, how do you make sure that your people are here? And mm -hmm. how are you building that level of loyalty where they have loyalty to the organization, but you also earn that loyalty? Absolutely. Um, so it, it really has evolved. And I'm sure we'll continue to see that evolve, you know, in, in the next 12 to 24 months as well. And 
I've read recently about this term, uh, coffee badging, which I'm not as familiar with, but you think about from a time standpoint, you know, what are, yeah. you, what are you hearing out there for? Yeah. Oh, well, it's definitely a thing. I've read about it. I've heard about it. So kind of known as an individual comes into the office, usually someone who is working virtual, they come in, they grab a coffee, they sort of do the FaceTime around the office um, and they're sort of in and out, no actual work done um, in the office. And and the struggle is that sometimes leaders are encouraging this as well. So when I think about this, I don't believe it's a challenge that we have, but I do believe it's a challenge that, that does really exist out there. And it's really all about creating a culture, hiring to culture, giving people something they want to come into the office for, something mm -hmm. that's different than what they can get at home. Um, and so I think that's really, really critical when you think about it. Yeah, it, I, I've heard people talk about earn the commute. And, you know, and so I out there, I think the average commute time across the U.S. is about 25 minutes, mm -hmm. but they're not going to drive 26 minutes. So you're seeing a shift in moving businesses and workspaces closer to where people reside and live, the emergence of the co-working trend, because really finding ways for team members to collaborate, connect, and all those things are key. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. And so as we think about it, I'd love to show you some of the spaces that we've been transforming. Our team has been blessed to really design over 10,000 workspaces for clients from all over the country. And we own and operate over a million square feet of office space here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And we're really learning about what our clients are looking for as they're recruiting and retaining talent, as they're building amazing cultures and teams and businesses. And we're learning a lot. And really thinking about it in three ways. So there's areas to collaborate, areas to concentrate, and areas to connect with team members. And a lot of the design trends have changed. Yeah, Jason, how has that changed? I know that we are constantly getting feedback from our customers. So how have you seen that change in the last couple of years? Yeah, so as we looked at it uh, before COVID, probably 70, 50 to 70 percent of the spaces that we were designing were a lot of those traditional heads down, desk, side table. This was the setup for a lot of our clients. That's really shifted to almost 50 to 70 percent are now these design spaces and areas to connect for team members and really also to collaborate yeah. as you're thinking about where team, can team members ideate. Yep. And so the space that we're in right now is really a collaboration space. And this is where a lot of our brainstorming sessions can take place. We have writable walls, um, digital boards, things where people can just come together and have that interaction that we're talking about that need to be together and connect. Um, and so these spaces are fantastic and they're something that people don't have at home. It's something that that will bring them into the office and really adds value. Yeah, I, I get these emails from CEOs and they're joking. They're like, well, there's very few brainstorm ideas that happen on a Zoom call, but there's something magical that happens when iron sharp and iron and teams get together and really come up with the next big thing. Yeah. And this is, those are those opportunities where people learn. We talk about Gen Z and engaging. This is where you can take those generational gaps and really bring them together and everyone learns. And as the team members are connecting and collaborating, but there's also challenges with concentration. And so how do we think about areas that team members can really focus? So when you do need to make a call to mom or jump on a quick Zoom call, Focus Pods, there's great companies out there. I think our friends that um, are on right now, but that also make these. But this is a great area for us to allow, you know, pods to be dropped into a space so people can, for a brief time, um, get together. The other thing you're seeing in the New York Times was talking about was the emergence and the resurgence of the cube. And so we are actually reinventing how we think about um, the cube of the future with our QuickFlex cubes and designing products that can change and really future-proof a space. But when you do need sound absorption, seated privacy, those types of things in a workspace, you've got to have those areas for your team members to, to connect and collaborate and also to focus and concentrate. And what I love about our product, Jason, is 
if we have a technology team that needs a certain level of privacy or a creative team that wants it to be more open, we have the ability to really meet the needs of everyone. And our teams are constantly asking for different things. Some are needing privacy, some are needing more open and collaborative space. And we have solutions for all of that. And we get to utilize all of that. Yeah. And we've got areas where team members need to focus on a project for a couple hours or 45 minutes, some heads down space. They can actually reserve a spot um, here in one of our, our offices. And so there's suites available or the pods that are also available. Um, I noticed that a lot of you have been sending in questions. So I wanna thank you for that. We're gonna, we're, I see they're handing me some questions here to answer. So we will answer a few of these and keep rolling through this presentation. So one of the questions we get um, from technology on booking rooms or reserving spaces. So you, you do have a lot of companies out there, they're doing hoteling where they're reserving space or hot desking where they're driving, but hoteling or reserving space um, we happen to use uh, Meeting Room 365. We've also tested other products from Envoy and Biamp and others, but this is the current one that we're using. So that's those are great because they work directly with Outlook. So it's great for our team members to do that. Another question on how are we handling sound and noise? And so we think of it really as three ways. So in, in the ABC, so you wanna absorb sound, you wanna block the sound, and then, you know, as you, as you think about it from uh, cover the sound. So we use a technology from Biamp. So the Cambridge sound masking system covers it. Also in our customer experience team that gets over 10,000 calls and emails, we use the higher end headsets from Jabra and some others. So that's a great way to do it. We've got a third question here, it looks like. So how do you handle remote or working from home? I'm gonna let you take that one. <laughs> yeah, um, well, how we handle it is we actually work really hard to have an incredible setup for all of our employees at home. And I think the key is what you're trying to drive is really having your team be in an environment that they can engage at home the same way or the way that your culture wants to engage, even if they're in the office. Yep. Um, so those in-home experiences, creating a great setup is really important to that. And we're doing teams some days of the week, they're in office and others. Yeah, also, we've actually, we, we do a kind of an all-in day and there are certain teams that have said, hey, we want all of our all-in days to be the same. So we're doing sort of a three-two. Um, but several of the teams had said it's so valuable if we're all here together. And so we've seen a lot of that and had a lot of success with yeah, it. Yeah, a lot of companies are trying that as well. We've also transformed, really helped thousands of people and uh, thousands of companies think about uh, working from home and building out the products there. And so we do think about that you need the same technology, the security, the firewalls, all those from a technology standpoint. But from a product standpoint, you also want ergonomic solutions solutions, the desk, all those tools so that you've got a great work from home environment for your people. And so if you can set up those same tools, it allows them to have access to it so they can have a healthy work environment. Um, and so that's just a great way to think about it. But we also got to remember that not everybody has the perfect place to work from home, whether you've got family members or a partner, or yep. other people are working from home. So it's also nice to leverage whether it's co-working or spaces to get out of your home office and come in and collaborate and For connect. Sure. For sure. So we're now entering our third area, which is really connections. So as we think about getting people together. And so this yeah. is a great space and we've got yeah. members throughout. The, the connection space, it, it's probably my favorite because um this is where you can really see the culture come to life. And ultimately, you know, your culture is your team. So one-on-one um, -on -one spaces where people can do impromptu meetings, have lunch, um, connect with others, um, see people catching up on ESPN and doing things like that. Lots of impromptu parties and events take place in here. Um, and probably one of my favorite um, stories that we've heard recently happened actually as we were talking about this session. Um, you know, we talk about how important our in-person and our connection is um, with onboarding. Um, Audrey was talking to me about how her onboarding class actually meets in here every Wednesday and they just have kind of a standing meeting. If you're able to come and can join the team for lunch, you come in, you join. And those are things that are just happening organically. They're not something that we've tried to create or of course, it's just that opportunity. So that's really your culture um, coming to life, but having an environment where you can allow that to happen. And so that's why I think this space is so special. Yeah, it's it's fun to do all these these changes too, as we're thinking about. I think y'all just saw the walls literally being transformed because we're also learning. This is a living, breathing ideation lab. This million square feet of office that we own, we're literally navigating the future and trying to find things that are working 
and when things don't. So as, as clients are, we're helping CEOs future-proof their space. We're always thinking about flexibility and change, hybrid, remote, getting back in. Yeah. Another design trend that we're seeing is this whole emergence of resumercial. So you've had groups that have worked from home, but you want the comforts and warmth of home brought into with commercial grade quality into the workspace of the future. That can include biophilia and the plants and nature being brought in, but the warmth and the richness of all those products being brought into a space allows us to do that. Yeah, and you know, I think when I talk to peers, they think of the Vera desk or they think of the electronic standing desk and they don't realize that all the stuff that we have in these spaces is ours. Yeah. And so I have peers say, oh, that's a really cool break room, but you know, do you guys go buy all that? It's it's all our stuff. So that's um, really cool. Yeah, well. I was on with an A&D call today and she asked the same question. She didn't realize that we had a lot more stuff than just the Vera desk still. And even though we're now 12 years in with almost over 5 million users of our products, and today we've got about 300 different products that we are testing and trying and learning yep. as we continue to navigate it. Um, so that's been fun for us. So I think we have some questions that are popping up. I see y'all waving at us. We have some stuff to answer here. Okay, so the, um, the I'm gonna, I want you to do this one. We'll see. No, but, well, so does hybrid really work? I get asked this all the time and you know, there's a, there's a magic to having people in together. So this is awesome to this particular conversation that we're having today works virtually, but there's also something magical about when teams are together. Yeah. And I think hybrid's here to stay. And I think hybrid does work. It's just about your organization figuring out how you handle it and how you do it. People very much value their personal time and having the ability to intermingle those two things. So I absolutely think it's here to stay. I think it works, but I think you have to make it truly organic to your culture. And you also have to hire to that. You have to be really transparent about what that looks like in your organization and what works for your organization. Absolutely. The, the second was, how do I get my teams back in office? So obviously you, uh, whoever wrote this is you're recognizing there's a value to having the team members back. And so whether it's uh, productivity or culture or some onboarding or mentoring, because you're trying to to do that. And so I, I think one, we were talking about really creating those intentional spaces and, yeah. and opportunities to, to connect back. And we talked about that kind of earning the commute, but it is, it's creating spaces, um, you know, that people want to connect in and that they really see that value in. Um, we also do a lot of things, you know, initially where people, um, we, we make sure we do those culture building things when people are all in the office and that makes them excited to come in and continue to come back. So again, that earning the commute thing. Yeah, we've got, we, we've been popping popcorn on, I think on Wednesdays at two o'clock in our original headquarters back when there's five of us there and it was a microwave bag. And now that we have a million square feet of office in our three buildings, we still pop it like it's hot and the tea and all these different companies are interacting but there's something that happens when all those different organizations from CEOs to first line, frontline workers, everybody's in there grabbing some popcorn and just connecting it there. Um, somebody's asking, how do you think about or what do you think about the future of office buildings? And, and as a as a building owner, and so we're, we're literally navigating that as well. And so by owning a million square feet of office. So for all of you in commercial real estate, I feel you what you're trying to navigate there because a lot is happening. So like you, we're seeing the flight to quality. So amenities and having access to great um, outdoor space, to having the fitness centers, the coffee bars, the bevy machines, the water stuff, all those things are now table stakes inside of a great building. And you've got, so you got to have all those, you've got to be in the right areas. And I think that's why you're seeing the emergence of these great co-working operators that are closer to where people live because they're, they're also creating some great spaces. And then also in the buildings where we've taken older buildings and brought them back to life or helped our clients do that, they're talking about FitWell certification. So they might be already checking the box on LEED certification, but FitWell is now the next level of certification when you're thinking about mental health and wellness, mm -hmm. which I think is a huge thing as we think about recruiting and retaining talent. Yeah. And, you know, Jason, I think one of the things that we, because culture and we realize how valuable it is and how it increases productivity, we create that building culture too. And mm -hmm. I think that's so important. Like, even if an organization doesn't do that, if they're in a location or a building that creates a community, um, it encourages people to be here and it encourages them to have a little bit of fun while they're at it. 
got some more here. So outside of the absorbing, blocking, and covering sound, you discussed how do you mitigate road noise. Um, so a couple things as you think about, so when we built this building ground up, um, actually, and we're, we're right here by the airport, it's very quiet with today's technology um, from that standpoint. Also, we like to have music inside of the space because it creates a baseline of energy, especially even outside when you're walking up to the building. Because think about it, you're interviewing people, your guests are coming in to do business with, you're creating a general energy. There's music in the restrooms, which is a little subtle detail that we like to add with our my hospitality background. And we also leverage with the buy-in, we have the white noise, so we can do it by zone. So we can have white noise in certain areas and tweak that over time. But we're continuing to learn there. And we use the music for fun too. It's fun, I mean, it's yes. people get to pick their own songs and do things like that. So it really helps personalize. I try it. to get the seventies in there whenever possible, but typically it's not, it's usually not, accepted. not usually <laughs> nobody lets, um, there's a question on hoteling versus hot desking versus designated workspaces. Uh, yeah. How do you, that's, you know, I don't think that there's a one size fits all on this. Again, it goes back to your culture, but I will say um, that when you're doing multiple days in the office, people really value having their own space. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for them to personalize it, have their pictures, have that thing that is there, that destination that they go to, especially with the privacy concerns that people still have or want. Um, so I think that if you do a hoteling um, scenario, you have to make sure that you're pretty universal about mm -hmm. it. We work really hard to make sure that people have individual office spaces and that they personalize them, that they're theirs and um, that they feel like they have a home when they're not in their home. Yeah, I think some of the companies that have gone to 100% hot desking, where it's just you pick a desk every day, they end up, they talk about the beach towel effect, where you're trying to like leave something there, you know, so you can hold it while you're gone. And it just becomes a very awkward thing. And I think because that causes friction in a culture, you don't need those types of distractions. So uh, you do a great job, like Great Places to Work Surveys is a great tool for us to get feedback. Yep. Every year we have our, our grade, so we've been a great place to work, like all of y'all. And so as you think about that, those are the also the tools to get feedback, I think. Absolutely. Yep. And we've created a culture where people let us know. Like yeah. They, you know, they give us the feedback. We want to know. Yeah. And it's also fun, I think, as we continue to create the the spaces for people to have touchdown areas, because you're you're having a conversation and most conversations are out here in the open, just like you're having it at a Starbucks, just like you're working remote, having conversations. That's how your culture should be. Everything should be out and open and transparent. I think you know you've done a great job of helping us continue to elevate ours as we think about that. And so I think that's it on the questions. We're good. Okay, we're good. So we've hit all the questions. So we want to thank you, Audrey. You were awesome. So thank, thank you. you. We get so many questions about people because I think all of y'all are trying to build the companies and cultures of your dreams, and you're thinking about that. And so. We get those questions all the time. So if you want to schedule a virtual or in-person tour, just reach out to our teams You know, today, connect with us or anybody that invited you to the meeting, and we can jump on and show you what we're working on. Because I think all of us are navigating the future of work, and we want to help you navigate it for you and your teams. Because entrepreneurship, we think, is the lifeblood of our economy, and so we want to help you all be successful. Yeah. And I know we have a lot of um, HR people on here. So if you want to connect, I would love to connect because we learn so much from each other um, and can help each other. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you.